Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I've got a really fun tutorial for you in Photoshop. What we're going to do is we're going to have mountain climbers climbing up a, a dog. Let's have a little fun, let's add a little humor in here and also we're going to learn some cool Photoshop things along the way. So before I created the final product, what I did is I just did a mock-up like you can see here inside of Photoshop and I was actually able to grab all the assets from Adobe stock without having to spend any money or do anything like that. All I needed to do is just go into my library here and search for things like climbers. And then when I do that, I chose under there, photos, and you can see we've got all these pictures of climbers right here that we can find directly within Photoshop. So maybe I want to audition this guy. All I need to do is just basically select it there and then it just click on there. And what it does, as you can see there, it just adds it to the library. So the workflow is like this. I kind of experiment. I grab the photos from Adobe stock and I can just kind of drag them in and composite and just play around and try out different images until I find the images that I like. And in this case, there's four photographs. There's a photograph of the dog and then the three climbers. So all I need to do, if I want to use those in the high resolution version, I'm actually going to rebuild this with better quality now that I've just kind of mocked it up. And then I can license those images. And if you want to play around, you can get 10 free images. Uh, look at the link underneath. And you can see now it's a high resolution image without the watermark. And then I've got some of the uh, ones here I've cut out previously. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do the cutout. So here's one of the images here. And we're just going to cut this one out right now. And I'm just going to grab the quick selection tool. Make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm just tapping the left bracket key to do that. And I'm just going to kind of just click and drag over here just to make a rough selection around our climber. And let's go over there and we'll grab the head. And uh, it's looking pretty good. I don't need the rope for this particular one. So I'm actually just gonna make a smaller brush and I just wanna go over there and make sure I grab those hands and see where we've gone over there. All we need to do is hold down the Alt key and that's Option on Windows and we can just click in these areas we don't wanna select and that'll remove it from the selection. So what we've done now is we've made a rough selection around there. Now let's go ahead and refine that selection. And we can do that by clicking on Select Mask. And if we click on Select Mask, we can see, aha, there we go. There's our selection. We're doing it against black. We could have a look at different colors too, of course. We can just go under here, under View. And I'm going to change it to white. So we can view it on white as well. And we can see we've got some areas that need to be cleaned up a little bit. We can zoom in if we want by using this little magnifying glass tool and we can zoom in and we can see how our edges are looking. And if we use this one here, this forces us to add or subtract. So if there's little areas there that we missed, we can just kind of point with that to get those out. And areas we want to get rid of, we hit the Alt key or the Option key and we can just paint those away and we're just kind of basically creating a rough selection. In fact, let me do the same thing here. I'm just gonna make that smaller and I'm gonna hold the Alt or the Option key and I'm just gonna paint out those blue areas right now. Okay. And we've still got more or less a rough selection. So what we wanna do now is we wanna kind of clean this up. I'm just gonna hold the space bar by the way and I can move things around and if there's any areas I wanna add in here like that, we can do that. Now, to kind of clean this up a little bit, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom out. So I'm just gonna grab our magnifying glass, hit the Alt key, or that would be Option, and then just click once so I can see the whole thing. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do some things. So let's turn the edge detection on a little bit. Let's move it up a couple of pixels. And notice as I do that, see how that really starts to clean things up. We've got a little bit of blue around those edges and we can get rid of that by turning on Decontaminate Colors. And notice how that gets rid of that color fringing. That's looking pretty close. Now, if there's soft areas like hair, you want to grab this brush here and use that. But in this case, we don't. Looks like I've missed a little bit there. Or have I? Yeah, we have. And I'm just going to hit the Alt key or the Option just to kind of clean that up. And notice that that will automatically refine that edge for me. So that's not looking too bad. That's a pretty good starting place here. I want to make sure I get a new layer with Layer Mask and click OK. And now we've cut out our guy. So what I want to do now is I want to combine this with the dog picture. So the way to do that is just hit the V key for move. And then we're just going to click and drag, holding down. I have not released my pen off the tablet, or if you're using a mouse, don't release the click yet. 
hold down the shift key, release, and it will drop it right in the middle. All right, so we've got that one climber cut out. And of course, we've got the other couple that we've done. Notice I'm using the masks. The masks are great ways to work. So let's go over here. We want to make sure we're dragging these into the final one. And we've got this one here. We're going to drag that in and then release. OK, so now we've got our three climbers. Now let's have a look back at our comp over here and see what we did. Notice we've got the mountain climber on top and these two down on the side there. So why don't we reproduce that right now? So what I want to do is I'm just going to hide the first two and we're going to start with this one on top. So let's move him up to the top here and he's obviously a little bit big. So to resize, I'm going to hit control T for free transform. I'm going to hold the shift key and that'll constrain that so it doesn't get out of proportion. And if I want to also do it from the middle, I'm going to hold the alt key or the option and now I can scale this down. So let's have a look at some way that's going to look pretty good. And I like that there. So he summited the head of this dog. I love the tongue on the dog, by the way. I think it's hilarious. And, uh, and that's a pretty good starting place. Okay, so let's continue. We're going to do the next one. We've got this girl climbing. Notice this little edge here. You've got to watch for those. And what that is, is just when I clipped it on the edge there, you can see black brush. We can just kind of get rid of those edges. So just kind of be aware of those when you're doing this. And then we want to kind of have her climbing up here. So I'm just going to hit Control T once again, or Command T, and I'm just going to shift, shift drag from the corner. And we just want to kind of get our proportions pretty good. All right, so she's going to be about there. Grabbing hold of the ear and climbing up. All right, that's looking fun. I uh, notice we got that little line on there too. Always be aware of those. So we're just going to hit the black brush and just get rid of that. Looking good. And then finally, we're going to turn on our other climber here. Select his layer and we're going to move him. And if we forget where we're going to go, let's just have a look at what we did here for a mock-up. I've got him on the ear. So I'm kind of changing this a little bit. We've got our climbers a little bit bigger than what we used uh, on the comp. And in fact, I want to have him, I think it'd be kind of fun to have him climbing up the front here. Obviously he's too big. So I'm going to hit control T and we're going to scale it down just a little bit. I'm looking at the scaling. It's kind of matching there and that's looking fun. Like see how he's actually looks like he's literally climbing up the front of the face of the dog rather than the face of the rock. And once again, watch out for those little lines that appear on those edges of those masks. All right, so we're kind of part of the way there. The next thing that we want to do though is we want to kind of tie these together with some shadow. So the first thing we got to decide is, you know, where is the shadow coming from in this photograph? So it looks to me like the light is kind of in front and about this level. So that means that we're not going to get a lot of craziness going on with the shadows. So these shadows would just be kind of casting in here. So maybe under his feet, we might get a little bit. Um, but this guy here, we're definitely going to get some shadowing going on. So why don't we have a look at that right now? So we've got our first one there and we want to add a little shadow. So we're just going to go down and do the drop shadow under here. Just a very simple drop shadow. And let's move the layer style up to the side there. And we can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to click and drag. Notice how I can do that right on screen there. And I can play around with that shadow. But I'm looking at it and I feel like that shadow is going to be just a little harder edge. Not that hard. And we're going to drop the opacity down a little bit. Maybe to about there. And let's decrease that distance. Have it a little closer. So we don't have a lot of shadowing going on. But if we look at this before and after, see how it just kind of cements him into that image and that's working pretty good. Now we could drop a little shadow here going onto the leg of the dog if we wanted. Um, I don't really necessarily think that that's necessary and same with up here because of the angle it's looking at we really don't need to do a lot with the shadows. So depending on the image you're working with you're going to want to do things with shadows. In this case I just added the shadow on that one person because that light would be casting a shadow onto the surface behind him. So what you really want to do when you're doing these kind of composites is always look first, figure out where the light direction is coming from and then put the shadow on the opposite side. So if it's a very steeply angled light, then that shadow is going to cast and it's going to spread in, uh, you know, in an elongated kind of a fashion. If the light's straight on, 
then if there's going to be any shadow at all, it's going to be very, very minimal and it's just going to be behind it. So there's things that like that that are just going to kind of tie things together a little bit. You also could consider things like depth of field. Let me just give you an example here. Let me show you. If I was to duplicate this, this person on top, let me make a copy of this. And I'm just going to hide our existing one and we're going to play around here. So if I wanted to put him further back, what I would need to do is I would need to make him smaller, obviously. You know, if we're going to put him up here. But the other thing that we would need to do on this guy, if we were going to put him here, is add a little bit of blur. So if I was going to add the blur, what I would do is, first of all, as I convert this to a smart object, just by right clicking, see that on the layer name, convert to smart object. That way, when we apply the filter, it's a non-destructive filter, which means that we can tweak it and change it to get it to match exactly without losing any quality. So at this point here, we're looking, see how it's softer there because of the depth of field. So we're just going to choose a Gaussian blur here. So that's just under filter blur, Gaussian blur. And that seems like a little much. So we'd go for a little bit of depth of field to match, like maybe about there. What I'm doing is I'm looking at that edge. See that edge there? I'm looking for the same kind of softness on our edge as we're getting there. And see how that gives us that appearance of distance versus having him up front here. See how it's very different kind of a look here. And if we move him over there, you can see how we're getting that depth of field. As he goes further away, it's softer. And as it gets closer, it's harder, so we're not going to be softening the edges on there. So um, that's, you know, maybe it's another lesson for another time where we can talk about depth of field in another tutorial. So we have a Photoshop Cafe Facebook group, and I'd love to see what you're doing with this tutorial. So post your miniaturization pictures into that group. Link is underneath. So if you want to kind of start playing around and experimenting with these, grab those 10 free images, link underneath, from Adobe Stock. Also, if you use your own photographs and you build these kind of composites and tell some fun stories, you can also submit those to Adobe Stock and you can sell those, uh, get in front of millions of people and also earn a little extra revenue. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button into dust, drop a comment, subscribe, become part of the cafe crew. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.